Uh, good morning. Um, so this is another video for our six on groups looking at the non-examined assessment work that we're undertaking at the moment. Um, I'm splitting section A, which is our investigation um, section, into smaller chunks. So this uh, lesson today is looking primarily at our clients and our target market, uh, both the same and different at the same time. Uh, just as a reminder, if you're watching this video already, I suppose, and future converted, this video is available on our, new, on our YouTube channel, uh, KA's uh, Creative Arts. If you click on that link in the PowerPoint, it will take you there. Okay, so moving on. Um, in my first video, I forgot to talk about actually setting up the pages correctly. Um, really important that we do this. Um, normally, PowerPoint is automatically set up nowadays to be a landscape widescreen which is great for showing videos like this on YouTube or presenting in front of people because uh, TV is a widescreen. However, for printing onto A3 paper, it's not very useful at all. So what you need to do here is go into uh, designs, which is at the top here, highlighting that. Click on that. Then you want to go to slide, side size, custom slide size, and then you need to change that to A3 landscape. It just means that that piece of paper is then always A3. Um, and it means that when it comes to print it and work on it, we're being consistent. On top of that, in the big bubble in the middle, um, you've made sure your pages are A3. I'd like, feel free to then pick a design style, what fonts you want, what colors you want. Um, you want to, at that point, go onto maybe the master slides, uh, which will be in the view settings, which are just in there, okay. Um, and in view, you can click on master slide and you change the, the basic slide setup that you have. The reason why I'd suggest you do that is because then you mean you're going to be consistent on every page. Um, but in terms of hints and tips, you need to be consistent. You need to make sure that every page looks like it's your work. If you one page is in Comic Sans, the other one's in uh, Calibri, one's in Times New Roman. Anybody looking for the work will get confused as to whether or not it's the same person doing the work. So same font same style if you're if you're going to put the title somewhere put it in the same place each time use the same sizes colors that consistency makes it really easy look at someone's work to go oh, i just know who this is I, really it looks good it looks more professional um and it's generally better to do so be consistent if you change the master slides that makes life a little bit easier um there's just a few hints for you uh, i will pick you up on this when I start seeing work getting handed in. Okay, so that's just a couple of pointers. Uh, one of the things I would say, if you can avoid it, avoid using this bit here. Okay, they all look the bloody same. Okay, um, do something a little bit different if you can. I'm, I'm, I like the new mode of um, PowerPoint where you've got. Uh, the design ideas tab on the right hand side. I've been using that quite a bit, but not all new versions of PowerPoint have it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, try and be a little bit different with your styles. Look at some of the waggles that you can see on future pages. Okay, moving on to the actual task now. So uh, client versus market research. So all of you have to have a client during the coursework. Uh, sorry, call it coursework, non-exam assessment. And your client is somebody you're going to go back and forwards to. You're going to have an idea and talk to them. They're going to give the, their feedback. You might take that on board and change your design radically, or you might go, actually, at the end of the day, I am a designer. I sort of know better in terms of how to design and how to make this. So I need to argue and discuss my your views with your client. So it's a two way um, system with you and your client, but it's a specific person uh, who you're designing for. You're going to be in regular contact with them and you're going to have interviews, conversations, emails, uh, whatever you can do at the moment. The market, however, is something different. These are the people who are likely to use your product. Obviously, your client is the main person who's going to use it. But let's say you are making uh, a computer table for your dad. I'm making one up as I go along here. Um, that's great. You can talk to your dad about it. You can get lots of ideas, share things with, with them, get that feedback, great. 
But in the day, you're also going to do some research about other people that use computer tables to get a wider range of ideas and opinions. Okay. Obviously, the client's the really important one, but you've got to take into consideration what other people think as well to get a better understanding of what you're going to try and create. And that's why you do surveys and focus groups. So those are the slight differences. And actually, on one of the waggles I'm going to show in a bit, uh, I'll show you another difference again, but a very specific project, that one. So client research. The first thing we want to do is profile our client. Who is it? OK, who are they? Name, age, gender, wealth, jobs, hobbies. Just give us as much information as you can about them. OK, why are they your client? Why have you picked this person? OK, you need to know and be able to explain quite coherently why this person is going to the person you're going to talk to. Uh, what do they need from the product? What do you think they need from the product, should I say, rather than what do they need from the product? That's the next bit. And then photos of them, ideally with the problem. So if you're doing, I don't know, a, pro a project to design a lamp for a desk, you might want to see, get them maybe sat at their desk in the dark. Um, I'm sure they'll love taking that sort of photo. Obviously, some people might not, not want their photos or names in um, your folders, and that's completely understandable. Uh, you could maybe use a stock photo from the internet uh, at that point um, and maybe change the name. But generally speaking, if you can use them, do use them, the real person. OK. Moving on. So I would consider that previous page to sort of be half a page profiling the client. And then often the client initial interview would be another half page where you're just going to talk to them and find out what they want from this project. What do they want you to solve? So, so I'm going through this in order. Before you sit down to have a meeting with anybody, decide what you need to know before starting that conversation. There's no point sitting down with somebody and just chatting. OK, you'll get some good stuff, I'm sure, but it won't be all good stuff. Uh, so I've got some questions here that I might look to try and answer. What do they want the problem uh, product to solve or what do they want it to do? What else could it do? So what's the main thing? It's really important when you do. What are the sub things that would be nice if you could do this, but doesn't have to? Uh, what could it look like? How will it be used? Where will it be used? Uh, what other products will it interact with? So go back to my idea for a computer desk. It's going to obviously have a computer on it. I have another monitor, keyboard, mouse cup of tea, um, always have the cup of tea, um, mobile phone, speakers, you try and think about all those other things that might you might need to consider. Um, does, you, does your client have any ideas? It's always interesting when designing for somebody else. I've asked, I've asked clients before when I've done bits of design work, well draw what you want. Chances are if they're asking you to design for you, they're probably not that confident in drawing or don't actually have any great ideas. But if they draw an idea, that can be performed part of your project. And you can say, well, actually, I've took that idea. Here's me developing their idea. It didn't work, fine. Or it actually did work and I've got this great idea. But that's I always find that's a really useful thing to do. Um, what costs would be acceptable to them? It's always interesting to get an idea of how much would they be willing to spend. I've had the students in the past spend themselves hundreds of pounds trying to make a project for somebody that wanted something 20 quid. Uh, really important to get an, a better understanding of, are they after a high-end oak dining room table or after a flat pad dining room table? Okay, they're both dining room tables, they both do the job. And then obviously you're gonna have some other questions specific to your project. I don't know what they are, you're all doing different projects. Um, so those are sort of the, the next set of questions you might ask. And here we have some waggles for our interviews and our client profile. One of the key things you can see straight away with the waggles is where they've got questions in black maybe and the answers in red, uh, where there's a, a key on the one on the left there where it's client answers, uh, client-based evaluations, it's different colours. Both really good that. I, I, I'm a big, big fan of using colours to make sure things are clear. Um, and this is where I've also added earlier, I mentioned that there's a slightly different approach here. So this student on the top right, I can't highlight it, 
has done a client profile and a client interview tick exactly what i just talked about they've also done a user profile so they, they were designing a homeless shelter um, that was going to be transportable for people so their client was actually a charity it was a people that would be making and selling this product because they were the one they were going to talk to so that was the interview was linked to that client but they also profiled the person that's going to use the product that's a slight slight difference there so if you're designing a, a bookcase for a member of your family well the client and the users is the same the same person but if you've got your client is oxfam because you're designing a water carrier for sub-saharan africa the user is going to be somebody in sub-saharan africa that's going to use it they're very different people so it's worth considering that just in case you need to do a, a separate bit of profiling and that's okay okay both of these are over a or higher grade papers or both of them, both of these students got over 90 percent in their their nea so it's worth looking at um and then finally on the waggles there's and this one the bottom left is particularly good this box here uh, my mouse is going all over the place uh key points just bullet points in what are the key things you've learned from this if i go back to some of our gcc work from last year the conclusion boxes um and i've just read through all the current year 11s all very samey it's like on this page i have done a client profile a client interview and i've learned what my client wants brilliant those bullet points that doesn't tell you or me anything what i want here is my client says it'd be really useful for it to hold uh, 20 pens in on this desk and that's a key point i need to do that bullet point it conclusion learn something i've learned that's going to be important through the project not my conclusion is that i learned stuff okay moving on so market research it's all going through the process of how i would plan the market research this is now we're looking at a wider group of people that might use your product uh, in the future job one decide how you're going to collect the data are you going to use an online form paper survey focus group discussions because that's going to be the, the start point um, decide what information you need to find out do you need to find out what their favorite colors are that's very gcc do you need to find out what functions they're like go back to this random desk i'm designing now um, what maybe please list in importance uh, which items you want on your desk coffee cup a lamp so i've got some books a speaker a roll of salad tape i can see here i've got sooty i've got a variety of different things on, on this desk rating in importance and amazingly you get a, a really good list there of what things are going to be important to people so try and move away from the favorite colors question if you can and look towards what functions they want what materials they want what joining methods really get into the nitty-gritty of what they what they think is going to be acceptable for a project um, then you have to decide what format the questions to go in closed questions are really good for drawing graphs uh, so be that multiple choice a ranking question or a yes no answer uh, open questions are pretty much impossible to draw graphs from uh, but you can get some really good information so if you ask them um, what would you like your product or your on the computer desk to do they might come up with a whole load of written stuff or you can have closed questions so you can you can come up with some different questions there and then write up the results this is something that obviously you would have done last year you create graphs and charts uh, and tables and then you need to explain what those graphs charts and tables tell you i'm not going to go through showing you how to use excel to get those graphs charts and tables there are other youtube videos out there for that uh, if you do want that help though i can i will give that individually if you want help in how to create graphs um and then the next page we've got some waggles for this so once again a couple of last year's uh, a-level students so you can you can see the difference from your gcc work to a-level work here still got the graphs got really clear title which is the question what they're trying to answer but the information underneath is really unpicking what have they learned from that question okay they are not asking which what's your favorite color red blue or green okay uh I mean, so from here you can get a better idea from looking at the graphs you don't just discuss what was the big thing oh from this graph you can see that most people wanted this you can also discuss from this graph you can see very few people wanted 
this. Um, you can amazingly, just like anybody that works with statistics, you can make the statistics tell whatever story you want. So if you want the product to be made out of wood and the statistics don't show you that, you might say, well, the statistics here show that the clients don't want it to be made out of plastic, um, but would be very interested in it being made out of wood and metal, even if wood wasn't the top one. You can change the writing slightly. Once again, you focus on those conclusions. They're going to be really, really important. The blue box and the black box on this page are showing like, the key points that that person has learnt that will be used in the project. Not on this page, I learnt that people did, que did a questionnaire and gave me some information. That's not what you learnt. That's what you did. I want you to tell me what you've taken from this pro from this page that will be useful in your designing, in your making, in your, your future work uh, through this project. OK. And that is everything from me today, looking at clients and target market. I look forward to talking to you all soon um, and do shout if you have any questions. Goodbye.